we're moving from isolation to innovation. We're going from 2020 to 2021. Thank goodness we're moving out of 2020. Uh, if I hear that word unprecedented one more time, I think I'm going to go crazy. Uh, yes, it was unprecedented, but we had to adapt somehow, some way. Uh, with the fact that we're all in this together doesn't make sense either because yes, we are all in this together. We're in the one sea, but we're in different boats. Some of our boats were less seaworthy than others. So we're coming out of this time and what do, we, what do we make of it? What have we experienced and where do we take this experience? One of the things that, uh, that I've seen as a psychologist is that the symptoms that have been presenting through isolation and beyond have been very similar to post-traumatic stress disorder. And post-traumatic stress disorder generally comes from something quite serious like a, you've been in a war zone or you've been uh, seriously affected by some traumatic experience. But actually, people are expressing the same symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Mild, perhaps, but still the same. And that happens when your stress response is actually overloaded. Uh, what happens when you're stressed for too long over a prolonged period of time is that your heart rate goes up, your digestion goes down, uh, your frontal cortex actually stops working, so you're not very kind to yourself or to others. Uh, and actually your amygdala, which is the fight or flight response, goes into hyperdrive. Uh, so you start finding that you're agitated, you're irritated easily, you don't sleep very well. All of those things that have to do with the uh, accentuated, amplified fight or flight response. So isolation has done that to us. And sometimes there's a bit of survivor guilt here because you think, well, I haven't been in a war zone, uh, but actually the trauma you've experienced in isolation has been very similar. So the first thing to do is to cut yourself a bit of slack recognize that it's probably going to take about as long to recover as the time that you've spent in isolation or lockdown. And the reason for why it's going to take that long is that you'll be hypervigilant for quite some time. In other words, you're constantly looking for the next news broadcast, the case numbers, uh, the reports from interstate. You'll be hypersensitive to those things because you've had to be hypervigilant throughout isolation or lockdown. So allow yourself a bit of time to stabilise and not be so hypervigilant about, uh, about the effects of the virus.